Welcome back. I'm Daniel from Woodworking with Stash. Today we're going to make this great looking pencil box out of pencils. Looks complicated, doesn't it? Unlike all my boxes, it's not that hard. Just follow along the steps and anybody can, can make this box. It's come up great too. All the pencils inside, the lid stays up by itself. It's a good looking box. It makes a statement. And it's made out of uh, myrtle, Tasmanian myrtle. And, and with uh, American walnut feet, splines, and popper. So, come along on a journey and learn exactly how to make this box. A very unique looking box, isn't it? A pencil box made of pencils. Today we'll be making the pencil box out of Tasmanian myrtle. Great looking timber, it's got a very pink hue to it. And highlights will be with American walnut, always a great timber. The pencils will be inserted into a block of pine that goes up underneath the box. Of course, we need pencils and a heap of them. So follow along and we'll start. The thing we have to do is to get some of the myrtle and the pine in the crown, because they have to be wider than what they are now. Drop the, drop the glue in up and down, that spreads it enough. Okay, hold it up. Here you go, I've, I've, cut the, um, I've cut the box and I've put a groove in for the bottom We're using 6mm ply on the bottom but, the, but it has to glue to the uh, pine that holds the pencils and it's got to be up at least 30, 30 32mm from the bottom but we're going to plane the pine down to about 30mm so I want it to be up underneath by about 2mm so you don't see any of the pine when the box overlaps the uh, pine and, and we I made it um, 260 by 155 the box and I put it together in the usual way with the uh, masking tape method and, and a box cramp and then we'll take it from there
I think we take the box out of the box ramp now. There it is. Yeah, come on, good. Yep. Okay. Now we'll be, we will put the um, two or three blinds in this, probably two. In this. I might make them a bit bigger this time. It's uh, the warning, so I might make them a little bit chunkier. Okay, we've taken them, the murder out of the cramps now, and, and out of this piece we get one top for the box and one bottom where the pencils sit on, out of this piece. And I've also machined, machined the pine plug that goes in the The walnut goes really well with the uh, myrtle, I like it. Yeah, yeah, I like all tidbits. I keep saying that, don't I? Yeah. One day I'm going to say something I don't like. I don't know what day that's going to be, but maybe one day. I'll, I'll put the splines in the box, we're just waiting for them to dry. And I've cut, I've cut the bottom out of myrtle, I'll, I'll recut it. The box is 155 by 260. Now, you, you, for the bottom, I'm going to put a 45 chamfer on it. So after after I put the chamfer on it, the box needs to be 155 by 260. So the chamfer lines up with the side of the box. So when all the pencils go down, everything looks even. So, but you've got to allow for the chamfer. So allow, say, say 10. 10 mil for the chamfer, 5 mil on each side. So I go go one go 165 by two by 270 and cut the bottom of that and then put a, a 45 chamfer on it and that'll be the inside chamfer back to the same size as the box. I just, I just cut the uh, the walnut feet. So we're going to have a foot on each corner, an angle piece sticking out about five mil or quarter of an inch past the corner, just to give it a uh, just to give it a highlighter, a walnut highlight down below. It's going to look good. See, we're going to look that. And you notice I use my uh, my cross cut flat, very nice. Cut them so well. Not dangerous, very safe. I like it. Time for time for a story while we wait for the spines to dry in the box. It's come on, good have Okay, I'll continue on from where I left off. I um, we sold the we sold the yacht up in Queensland, and I came back to Melbourne. And I was hankering to buy a house, a house to renovate, which which I which I did, and in hindsight, I should have just kept that house. I would have been far wealthier now. I bought that house for, I think, $24,000. It's just a single fronted house up near, up near High Street, which is the main street of Melbourne. For uh, last year, it got sold last year for uh, $1.25 I should have just kept it. 
I would have been far wealthier, but a maker must make, and I like making things. So I bought it to renovate. And uh, I renovated it, I, I did a really good job. And when it, time, when it came time to sell the house, of course the interest rates were going up, there wasn't much money around. I made a little bit of money, but not much. So then after that, I, I shared a house with a couple of girls for a while. And that's, that, that, that was an eye opener. Okay, my friend who owned the cabinet making business and I started a building company. Spec blocked the land and putting houses on them and selling them. It was the recipe to lose money. Just about every job we done, we lost money on. I don't know why, but we did. I think we were too soft on people. People always wanted extras and we never charged for them. In the meantime, I was working for my mate, making the cabinet doors for his kitchens. Which is a good job. I enjoyed it. We, I used to make... Uh, it was taking about three days to make a set of doors. The machines he had, they, they weren't good machines, but they were adequate, they, they worked right. So we used to make them out of hardwood and blackwood and ash, and they was a good little job. In the meantime, I bought, an, bought another house to renovate. Again, it was, um, it was, it was, it was a, a night nice house, I'd done a really good job of it, but, but as soon as I went to sell it, the interest rates went up and the market was down. I didn't get as much money as what I thought. But that, that, was, that was it, that was, that was life, that sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Anyway, I was, I was still going right. Um, in, the, in the meantime, I was working for my mate making the kitchen doors, but I was, I was, I was feeling a bit, I was feeling like I needed to go out by myself. So another friend of mine, another candle maker and I set, set, set up a factory and started the candle making. And there wasn't, there was no shortage of work. There was work coming through the door every day, which was good. So there was mainly kitchens, butter. So that's what we did. I did kitchens every day for a long time after that. Anyway, that's the story for today, and we'll continue on in the next video. got the, um, we, we, we're going to put four dowels to hold this whole thing together. So I've marked, I've marked the, I've marked the, the top section with the um, grid for all the pencil holes and you see how I put those four bigger holes, the three eighth holes, in, in the centre. That's, that's what's going to hold the whole structure up. Now, the holes for the uh, pencils, I uh, worked them out at 7.5mm, so they're just a snug fit, like this. It's just a snug fit. So the pencils will just pop in there. Now you need to um, work everything out. Okay, when it's all assembled, Yes, we're gonna we're gonna drill all through the top of the pine. The pencil wanna sit just underneath the top so it doesn't interfere with the top box. So you see you see that? It just sits just underneath. So when I drill all the holes through, I just pass the pencils in and they'll just sit there. Perfect. And and the dowels, now I'll 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 drill the holes in the pine now and then I'll cramp this together and let it dry. Okay, a bit of a tricky, tricky way to do things, but uh, I've just let it dry there. I tried cramping it, but it just it skewed it. Because there's only a four little poles, so when I put pressure on it, it just kept skewing it over. So I decided I was just going to just line it up by eye, just line up the edges, make sure they're every square, and just, it's all tight, just let it sit there and let it dry. If I have to later, after it's dry, if I think I, I need to, I can put a screw or a nail in the top of the dowel just to really pin it and same in the bottom. 
but I'll, I'll figure that out after I um, after it dries. They're a little bit tricky these things, but that's how the boxes are going to look with all the pencils going in there. I think it'll look, I think it'll look good. But that's fine. Just wait till it dries, and then then after it dries, we'll put the the uh, walnut feet on it, and then we'll, we'll um, we can um, polish all this section up. But it's all going to be polished. Before we put the pencils in. I've, um, I've, pinned, I've pinned the feet on here, you see. They come out good. I like them. It just, it just gives another dimension to the box. It, um, it, just keeps it, keep, it just keeps it up off the desk. Uh, it, just, it just works. It just gives a bit of walnut down below. And I've seen, I've seen those spines. They've come out good, so it's coming out quite quite good. The box. Now, now we're going to cut the lid and hinge the lid. Now the lid is it, um is going to have the same same 45 degree angle as the bottom, but I'm going to leave it overhang six mil at the at the back, so it stands upright when it's open. Hey guys, it's coming on good now. I've hinged the lid. See how it, see how it just stays up by itself? Perfect. And I'm, I'm making a, a, a handle, a top top for it. Not so much a handle, but I'm making it out of a, out of a rubber. So I've got pencils on the bottom and a rubber on the top. But you've got to make it in such a way that the rubber's got to go in after it's polished, but you can't polish with the rubber in there because it will affect the, affect the rubber. So I'm making two two side mounts out of walnut that we'll just glue on now and then I'll just slip the rubber in with a little bit of silicon later. Perfect. So we're getting there now, I'm just gonna mount those two side mounts, let them dry, and, and polish. Guys, here comes the fun part: putting the pencils in. You, you've got to start at the centre because if you don't, if you start on the outside, you won't see the centre. You won't know when the pencils are down. You don't, don't want to hit them too hard; and you break the lead. So they're a fairly tight fit. I've put a couple in already. Put another purple one in. I just tap them in with a hammer. get down there and just hit him with a punch to the down.
all finished. How was that? How was this for a spectacular box? Like it? Like it all? It happens. Cut that pray, done it. This day happened by itself. It's just. It really works. It makes a statement. That it makes a statement, doesn't it? And it, and like all my boxes, it wasn't that hard to make. Just got to follow the steps. It looks hard, but it wasn't that hard. Just got to follow the steps, and any anybody can make this. It's not that hard. Just got to know the steps to go through. The murder, the murder come out great, but like I said, I like all timbers. And and the green rubber on top sets it off really well. Okay, that's it for this box. Uh, next time we might do a draw box, I think. And I do draw boxes differently than what other people do, as usual. And uh, we'll take it from there. So subscribe, ring the bell, but I'm only a new channel and I need all the subscribers that I can get. And you learn how to make, make boxes like this. And that's a good thing. See you next time.